Hey there everyone, this is Victor with Victor Vector JKU and today Project Vector is going to get some proper undercarriage protection. Let's get into it. Alright everyone, so yesterday I received these four packages in the mail from FedEx. This is the Undercloak Integrated Armor System by Metal Cloak. I'm going to go ahead and break these guys open and let's go ahead and talk about each of them and what's included in the kit. Alright, so we got everything unpacked and I got it laid out right over here over my shoulder. Uh, all in orientation is how it will be when it's mounted up to the bottom of the Jeep. But before we jump into that, I want to cover just a couple other little things real quick. So the Undercloak system by Metal Cloak fits the 2007 to 2018 Jeep JKU, both the automatic and the manual. Each of the skid plates is made out of 7 gauge hot rolled steel and the coating on the system is a gold zinc chromate. They provide you with all the hardware that you need, but there is some factory hardware that will be reused. As far as instructions, they do have a PDF copy available online, which I already printed out. And looking at a lot of comments and questions that people put out there, one big one was, what is the total weight of this system? So the total weight is about 180 pounds. The cross member is 30 pounds. The gas tank is 62 pounds. The T case is 44 pounds. The engine is 36 pounds. The gussets are about four pounds and the hardware is three pounds. So that sums up to about 180 pounds for you guys. This uh, skid plate system normally runs for $1,500 off of Metal Cloak's website. I waited for a sale to come around during Labor Day and they had a 10% sale going on. So I was able to get this at 1350 and that was including shipping and tax. So I was pretty happy with the full kit, including a new cross member coming in at 1350. And so that was uh, another big reason why I went with this kit because my cross member is actually pretty well damaged. I'll show you that here in just a little bit when I get underneath the rig and also uh, highlight the big old dent that I have in my gas tank skid plate currently. Now let's go ahead and start looking at some of the components here. So the first thing we're gonna look at here is the gussets. So these gussets will mount up to the engine mount on the frame and that mounts to the holes located up on the front of the engine skid plate. And notice that there is this nice big hole cut out here that's for access to your drain plug and it makes it so you don't have to drop this skid plate when you have to go do an oil change. That guy then will mount up to our new cross member and this guy is really beefy uh, in comparison to factory cross member. So the factory cross member is about eighth inch steel. This guy is seven gauge which is approximately three sixteenths of an inch and also they sleeved where the four mounting bolts go through to mount it to the frame. That's going to add additional strength so this cross member does not crush when you are tightening it in. And then we move on to our T case. So the T case and the gas tank are both boat sided on the sides here so you can see that it has a angle to it and that just is going to help slide off of obstacles. Then over on our gas tank again we have our boat side. As you can see on this side here our bolts are recessed that are going to be using the factory mounting locations. And then as far as the hardware that gets included here, we actually have skid guard washers, which will protect the heads of the bolts. They also provide you with some new nut certs that are going to be going into the frame to replace some of the clip in nuts. And then also it does provide you with the tool to go ahead and install that as well. So you have everything in this kit that you need. So let's go ahead and jump on the Jeep and I'll show you what we got going on. Hopefully you can see this all right, but you can see that my uh, gas tank skid plate going back along here is pretty well dinged up and you can see how chewed up my cross member is. I'm gonna see if I, can get, if I can't get that dent out and then we'll go and jump into the install right after that. All right, so. I have my gas tank up and supported with the two ratchet straps, so I'm going to go ahead and drop the gas tank skid plate out. Alright, so with that, I have my dent out. I'm good to go ahead and fill this guy back up. Add 
as we start going up, I'm going to release the tension on the straps, take the rear one out, let it fall back into the skid plate, raise the skid plate up a little bit on both front and back, relieve this one, and then I'll reinstall a few of the bolts for the skid plate. guys so you can see now that my gas tank skid now has that nice dimple popped out of it it's nice and smooth again just like it should be now we can go and jump into disassembly and install of the metal cloak system so first off I just want to show really quick so the first thing you're going to be disassembling is going to be the transfer case skid plate so there's going to be two bolts one here and here there's going to be a bolt back here and a bolt over here on the gas tank. Next up, what we're going to be doing is removing the cross member and replacing it with the metal cloak cross member. So first step with this is we have to lower the front end of the gas tank skid plate so that we have clearance to be able to drop the cross member out from under the frame mount. So that's going to require us to remove the two leading bolts. I'm going to end up removing this bolt here along with this bolt up here. I'm going to loosen this bolt back here and then on the other side I am going to remove this bolt and this bolt and then you might be able to see it there's another bolt right here that guy's gonna get loosened so I'm gonna leave the two rear bolts loose and I'll remove the rest and then I have my transmission jack here to support the load of the gas tank and the gas tank skid plate and lower that while I remove the cross member. All right, so I'm gonna start off with a 16 millimeter and I'm gonna disconnect the three bolts that hold the transmission mount up to the cross member. And you wanna hold on to this hardware because we will be reusing this. Next, we're gonna use an 18 millimeter and a backing wrench to remove our fasteners for the cross member. And again, we're gonna hold on to this hardware. These will be used to reinstall the new cross member. You can really see the comparison of the thickness here. So what I'm going to start off with doing is I'm actually going to go ahead and drop my drivetrain down a little bit. I'm going to first mount the cross member to these. And I don't want to go down too far, just a little bit, because I don't want to put unnecessary pressure on my motor mounts. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my 16 millimeter and my impact gun and I'm going to reinstall my three nuts, the transmission mount to the cross member. I'm going to go ahead and hand start these guys to start with just to make sure I don't cross thread them. And we'll come back and we'll tighten those up more in a little bit. So now we'll just go ahead and keep hammering them up. My bolt holes are a little misaligned, so I'm hoping that I can push it this way as I go up. So what I did on this side over here is I just used a large pry bar that I have, and I put them between the frame rail and the cross member, and I just allowed a little bit of pressure to pry them over to the side, and I think that's gonna line me up really well. Keep on hammering them up. that I can go and reinstall my bolts so 
that is going to wrap up the cross member. Now, I will come back and I am going to torque these guys all per spec, including these. But otherwise, I can go and drop this guy out of the way now. Next up, I'm going to go ahead and lift the gas tank back up into place. And I'm going to go ahead and install the bolts on this side, tighten up the rear. But I'm going to leave the ones on that side out because the new gas tank skid plate will be reusing the front two points and the ones on the frame side. Okay, so we installed the factory hardware back onto these two holes on the uh, frame side. I'm probably going to call that a wrap for tonight. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and leave everything kind of set up back here, and we'll uh, jump back into it tomorrow. Hey there, guys. So we're back at it. So really quick, let me go ahead and run through what I've done so far. So you guys might notice my rear tire is off. I did that so it gives me better access to the drill hole here. I've also jacked up on the gas tank skid plate to make sure it's nice and firmly seated up against the factory skid plate. So I torqued these two, plus this one back here, installed and torqued this one, along with this guy up here, the one up here, and up there. So with all of that, I'll drill the hole on the other side, which I already pointed out. I have this hole here, and I have another hole right here that needs to be drilled out. So I'm gonna... When I first heard about this, I thought I was like, oh crap, I have to drill through the skid plate. I'm going to end up hitting the gas tank, which is only plastic, but I didn't realize at the time until I was looking at it. But where you end up actually drilling is right in this pocket. And so there's actually a, a gap between and another steel structure here. So if you drill through, you don't have to worry about penetrating the gas tank. So you do have steel, you're safe to drill in all these locations. All right, so next up, what I did was uh, I just raised up the gas tank a little bit higher with my jack here to be able to clear this rear bolt of the driveline. Now, before I go and drill this one, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to install the two bolts on the back side just to make sure that it stays in place before I drill this hole because I don't want to cause a misalignment between the other two. So what I'm going to be doing here is we're going to be using the supplied 3 8 inch hardware. It's going to require a 9 16 socket and open end wrench. All right. And I want to be careful that I don't drop this guy down because if I do, it's going to be a real pain to try to fish him out. So I'm trying to be cautious about how I do this right now. All right. Now for the... One back here, because it's so close to the driveline, they actually have a tapered out hole and they give you a ta tapered fastener. So we're gonna install this one here and that's gonna be using a 916 backing wrench and a 730 seconds Allen key. So again, don't wanna drop this stuff behind, so we're gonna be nice and careful. This one has a little bit more clearance to get through though, so. All right. Now we can go ahead and drop this guy back down. All right, next up, we're gonna be hitting this hole here. And again, because I'm kind of tight clearance to the drive line. And so what I did to get a little extra clearance here is I actually jacked up the axle on the passenger side to lift it up and get it up so it was higher to compress the drive line up a little bit more. Now we're gonna go ahead and Grab our 3 8 inch hardware again. We'll go ahead and get that guy installed. Next thing we're gonna do is we have to remove this little uh, clip-in nut. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a small screwdriver. So all you have to do when you're getting this guy out, you can see there's this little tang right here. I just put my screwdriver in right behind 
in between these guys, pry it up, and that's enough to get it to come out. And then you can just slide it right on out. With the clip nut out of the way, what I am doing now is I'm going to install the nut cert. So what I did, because I want to make sure that I have good up pressure when I'm getting it to seat, because you want to make sure that it is well seated when you're tightening it on, I set up a C-clamp to limit the travel of my wrench here so it won't spin on me as I'm tightening this. That way I can focus both hands on my socket wrench and I can apply up pressure while tightening. I feel like I have a pretty good solid crush all the way around. Fortunately, there's this other hole here so I can put my finger up there and feel it. All right, and that's the first one installed. So, a couple of things I wanna run through real quick. I had a few issues with the uh, nut cert install tool. So, the cross hatch to the lock washer here, or the lock nut, was not aggressive enough. So what I did was I took an angle grinder and I put in some notches, and those were able to get me the bite I needed on this guy when tightening him in. All right, next up, I'm gonna go ahead and bring in the transfer case skid place. All right, so what I'm doing right now, I got these two just lightly in place. I was just checking all of my other bolt clearances before I marked this guy to be uh, drilled out. So I got them where I like them. And next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna punch them and then I'm gonna go ahead and drill them. Marked, next up is to drill it. And we're gonna go to 11 sixteenths with this guy. So I'm gonna use a step bit so I can work my way up in size. All right, there we go. Got that guy drilled out and we are ready to install that next nut cert. I think that gets it pretty good. I'm gonna go flip my C-clamp around again. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and bring in the transfer case skid plate. So what I'm doing is just supporting it on my stomach and my uh, thighs. Lift it up with my thighs, putting them in up into place. Then lift up the pack, the driver's side. Get him into his approximate location. And I'm just going to go ahead and put one fastener in temporarily. Alright, so that one fastener is going to hold them up into place. What I'm going to do now is so I'm going to put anti-seize on all of these bolts because that's what Metal Cloak recommends you do. You don't need a whole lot, just a little bit. So that'll just prevent galling on these fasteners and prevent them from getting gummed up during install and it will make it so you can still remove them at a later date. And none of these are going to get tightened in right now. They're just going to get set up into place and still allow the skid plate to move around. So now with that one, I'm going to go and pull this guy back out, put in ICs on him, and finish with the rest of them. All right, so last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in the engine skid plate. I'm gonna go ahead and prep up my four bolts for that go to the cross member here with some NICs. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna put this guy up into place. We'll install the four bolts on it. And then we'll work on the front. So, with 
put those guys in place. Now we're gonna move on to the front straps. All right, so the next step is gonna be installing the straps for the front of the engine skid plate. So, which one goes on which side here? This is your driver's side. This is your passenger side. The reason for this is you have to clear the drive line and it's further to get up to the motor mount frame side. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the round side up and the square side down to the skid plate. So, I'm gonna go and get my hardware ready. And what we're gonna be doing is we'll start up top. All right, now for the passenger side. So again, we're gonna be putting the round side up and the square side down. Put it. All right guys, so doing a quick reference back at the instructions. Notice that I actually put these on the wrong side of the motor mount. They're supposed to be on the top side. And the bolt is supposed to feed from the top down as well. Alright, so you can see now how the strap is up on top of the motor mount and the bolt is coming in the downward position like it is there. So that wraps up the front. We... Alright guys, so the last thing I gotta do is install the last two bolts that go to the front of the gas tank skid plate to the cross member. then we are good to go ahead and tighten everything in. All right guys, so the last thing I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna go and take care of that off camera, and I'll list it down on the bottom of the screen here, is what I'm gonna torque all of these guys to. So I'm very happy with how this turned out. It is good and firm, strong, nice smooth belly system all the way through down the back. I think this is gonna be a good little system. All right, everyone, so that's gonna wrap up our install of the Metal Cloak Undercloak system for my 2015 JKU. So I gotta say, all in all, the install was pretty smooth. The directions and installation instructions that they provide are very well laid out. I'm very happy with the final result of it. It's a nice, smooth, flat underbelly skid and I think it's gonna do great for me. I'm heading to Reader tomorrow morning. Gonna be meeting up with people uh, from Instagram and also some other buddies that I've wheeled with before. We're gonna be putting the Metal Cloak Undercloak system to a test, so Reader's known for its rocks. I'm definitely not gonna be uh, shying away from any of those this time around. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button, give this video a like, and if you're not already, please subscribe to the channel sign up for notifications, and also leave me any comments, feedback, or questions that you guys may have. Otherwise, we are Victor Vector JKU. We're taking on this build and the trails with both direction and magnitude. All right, guys, have a good one, and maybe we'll catch you guys on the trail.